Hey, what's up guys? I just pulled up to this job that I've been working on all week. It was supposed to be a one day weld job, or that's what I was told. That's very common when it comes to construction work. Um, I'm actually doing the welding on a uh, structure of a Starbucks. All the metal parts that you see here are for the awnings. For some Starbucks, if you've seen Starbucks, some of them have awnings and that's what they're for. But then as you'll see, they got uh, wood framing around them or whatever to frame the rest of the building. But I gotta do, all the welds gotta be, you know, up to code and all that stuff. And the welders they had here before, um, couldn't do that type of, you know, up to code welding. So they got in touch with me. That's what I've been doing all week. Obviously I haven't been able to film much, but I'm gonna try to film today, at least a little bit, so you guys can see uh, how this has been going. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a welder for 14 years here on this channel. I share tips and tricks for rig welders. If those videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. Alright, so this here is what I've been dealing with. They've been grinding out the old welds and I've been uh, putting new welds in. Uh, this one isn't so bad. Some of them are, were way worse. They ground out too much, but I'm thankful that they, you know, they're a good crew and they've been coming in front of me and grinding out the old welds because that like cuts the time down a bunch on my part and saves me from having to do the grinding. So anyway, here is a weld that I'm fixing to do. I was gonna kind of show you what I do to fill this little gap. For one, I make sure that all the old weld is ground off, you know, against the, since this tubing's rounded, but I make sure that my weld's gonna be tying into the original base metal. But anyway, I more or less start to bridge it. I put a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side, and then I go right up the middle. I'm using a 332. If I've got like a huge gap, I'll use a 1.8. Um, but whenever it gets close, I just take a 332 7018 and I just turn my heat down to, I'm in like 150 range on this SAE 300, which is straight up and down on my main range. And then I uh, turn my box down to, my fine tune down to like 20, 15, I think, 15 or 20. And I just go back and forth kind of fast. I, just, I stay in my puddle, but I kind of do a little bitty upside, a little bitty use, I guess you'd call it. And I kind of hold on the sides that way because if you don't hold on the sides it'll fall in the middle or whatever so I just more or less stitch it up right up the middle and then uh, I put two cap passes on it to to cover it up and it looks like this 
So that's what I've been dealing with here on this job. It's been a good little job. This is typical with construction work. I think I might already said something like this, but with uh, contractors to, di to get different jobs, and I think they've had, a, I mean, they've done a bunch of bigger jobs, I think, like real big, like way bigger than Starbucks type of buildings, you know, but from what I've seen online, but I think they've also either had some welders that's put up barns for them or something because what the guy was explaining, the superintendent on this little project, he was thinking it would only take a day or a day and a half to weld. And after I got out here and started welding, and he was like, you're gonna be done with this one side today? And I was like, no, nah, there ain't no way, man. And I said, you know, um, there just ain't no way. And I was like, I wish I could tell you something different, but I can't, it just, that's what it takes, especially when I'm welding over old welds and it's this thicker material and it's got a, you know, meat code. It, they're not like super strict here. It's not like welding on a bridge or anything, but the inspector come out the second day I was here and looked at it. I mean, the inspector was the whole reason they got an other welder, you know, they got another welder out here to begin with. So they've had three welders. They've had two before me and then they finally found me and that's the whole reason is because reason is because of the inspector but that's good you know that's quality control the inspector knew right away whenever he seen these welds that were all downhill with 7018 and had bug holes and was all gobbled up and stuff he just knew right away that it wasn't going to work so he told them they needed to find a certified welder anyway my point is that's common a lot with construction companies and and being a welder it's not the first this is not the first time that i've had to come behind somebody that wasn't as qualified and make proper welds. Um, there's a time and a place for different types of welds. You know, the kind of welding that was done on this could have been, could have worked just fine on like, you know, thin, like uh, like metal buildings, you know, because it's not, like on, not all metal buildings, but like on your smaller metal buildings where you're welding like sea purlin and like, you know, thin stuff, you know, because all it really, all it takes is, you don't want to put too much on it because it can actually be worse for it. So literally just sticking it together is, I mean, there's still, you know, a proper way to do it also, but it's not as, um, it's a whole different type of welding, you know, it's different. So anyway, that's common. You'll run across these type of things with construction work, being a welder. Super thankful to be here. I've got a couple of little jobs that I need to do, but luckily I was able to back them up a little bit thankful for all the work that I've gotten so far so having a good time I think I've got I don't know probably I bet I'll have to come back one more day after today and I've been here so they thought it would take a day and a half or so and I've been here uh, four and a half days first day was a little over half a day really but so almost five days I've been here probably gonna wrap it up in six days I'm thinking and then I think they said something about the need me back to come weld on the awnings you guys have probably seen some of them Starbucks with the awnings that's uh that's what this one's gonna look like so anyway time to get back at it I got done welding over there on in that uh, in that doorway. Put them clips on for them over there. Welded up uh, that piece. Then they called me over here and needed me to make sure I welded out the tops of all these right here because these beams get sandwiched with some uh, two by sixes, and so they can go ahead and put trusses up. This is the last beam right here that they got a sandwich. They got to put their. Two by six on top, that's what these bolts are for, is to bolt wood all the way around it. And uh, so my man lift died. I got through welding over there. Or it didn't die, I don't know what happened to it. I've got a ladder now, but I'm gonna take my ratchet strap and 
rack and strap my ladder to this post. That way it's nice and sturdy. And then uh, go ahead and weld this top. I've only got one, two, three tops here to weld, six inches. I'm gonna weld a little bit down. That way, whenever they put their wood right here, I'm not having to, because I like to go a little bit over the top to tie in. So I'm gonna probably weld a couple inches of this gap here, but I'm definitely gonna weld the tops. That's what I'm talking about right here, because they put two by six right here, just like, well, you can see it over there, I guess. And that beam it gets sandwiched so it's gonna be the exact same over here because then they're gonna start putting trusses so got three six inch welds to make plus a little bit down each side but first I'm gonna put a ratchet strap right here that way I can hang my bucket and my uh, brush and whatnot and then get to welding Another one bites the dust. On to the next one. That's a wrap. My advice for this week is don't hesitate. Just go for it. What I mean by that is when it comes to wanting to be a welder, or any trade for that matter, uh, but we'll use welding for example, since you're watching a welding channel. Don't let anything hold you up. Just, just go for it. Your doubts, anything. Don't. Uh, welding school, say the welding school in your area is booked out, a mile long, can't get in, you've called them a hundred times. Don't let that stop you. Go buy any welding machine. And I don't mean this for long term, but I just mean just to get you started. Any welding machine. I don't care what it is. MIG, stick, just buy one and a box of 1 8 6010, 6011, 6013, whatever. Just a box of welding rod and just start welding on plate or anything, whatever you have. Pipe, plate, channel, I don't care. Just start welding. Start studying that puddle. That's where it all starts, is studying the puddle. Now, I'm not saying don't go to welding school because I firmly believe in welding school. I went to welding school my junior and senior year of high school very very beneficial well worth the money if you want to make a career out of welding but don't let that stop you if you can't get in the one that you're wanting to get in try something else push 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 be a little stubborn if you want it bad enough you'll do it thank you all for watching and remember learn something every day <laughs>